Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. With the second week of the Milestone event underway, we've got our new Master Set. So now we have all eight of the Master Set players that are in the NHL 23's Milestone event. So we are going to complete the tier list that I started with week one. So in this video, we're going to cover all of the four new week two Master Set players, and I'll touch on the week one options as well. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe and give it a like. All right, let's get into it. All right, I just want to touch on some of the week one uh, Master Set options that are available to you in week one i had uh, patrick watt in the b tier he remains there but honestly should be even lower i haven't used him personally but every single person in my community that has used patrick watt not one of them has said he's been good you know my stance on goaltenders none of them are gonna bail you out and get you wins a lot of them are every once in a while will steal you a goal maybe but patrick watt just, just doesn't seem to be it however he does still have some incredible abilities and there just isn't a lot of options right now for goaltenders so i'd probably put him in the C tier, but labeled him in the B tier in the last episode. Phil Kessel was also in the B tier. He still stays there. He remains there. Uh, his cost just drives this. So this is one of the cards that you can't make. You can only get him in packs, uh, which makes him extremely rare. He was one of the cards that jumped up from an 83 to an 89, much like Jamie Benn and Edler Will, as well as Ovechkin and Stamkos. But Phil Kessel currently just not worth the insane price tag that you've got to get uh, pay to get him. Hillary Knight I had in the A tier. She remains there. All of the reports I've had on the Hillary Knight card have been fine again not very popular one because i think a lot of people shy away from some of the women cards but unstoppable force is still unstoppable force and she has decent size 91 speed 92 acceleration uh there's no really issue with her card you can even play her at center as well um with 82 on the draw if you are really good at face-offs but is going to be more than likely a right-handed winger for you but still a strong option in the a tier oel from last week was in the s tier because of the size skating as well as stick em up still remains there uh played against oliver ekman larson quite a bit and very very tough to get around with that stick him up ability and the fact that he's six foot two uh should have some longevity it is going to take some time for big defensemen uh with around 90 speed to really get surpassed so pretty safe here if you don't have any of the other strong options if you made bone byram though uh i'd probably avoid just because you'd be paying full or paying a master set price for a second pairing uh or bumping down byram so uh that'd be the only reason why I wouldn't do that, but uh, Oliver OEL has been a very, very good card. And lastly, I had Zabinijad in the S tier. Still remains there. Phenomenal card with elite edges. Have him on the God Squad and no money spent. You can play him at center. You can play him on the wing. Uh, really, really good lineup flexibility. So if you haven't made a Master Set player, Zabinijad I would 100% make if you are someone that plays the game regularly. Um, if not, then I just save for Team of the Season, but or Team of the Year. But nonetheless, this is a very, very good card. Alright, on to this week's Master Set players. We're going to start things off with the 89 Jenny Hirokoski. So she is a five foot five left handed defenseman at 137 pounds. If you removed that and just made her 5'10, 180, with everything else, she's god tiered. Wingman and gladiator. You could even put distributor on her and get her acceleration up a little bit. And then the abilities quick pick, stick them up, and shut down. There is still no way to get around the size. I had a couple people in my community pull her on tradable user, and even with the abilities, it's very very tough i think if they would have given her truculence that might have kind of um, alleviated some of the issues with their size and again if you are someone that you know maybe you're from finland or you want to use her card go ahead i'm just you guys are just coming to these videos for recommendations not worth the price that you've got to pay to get her everything else is honestly god tier but that size on defense especially defensemen are where you can really really take advantage of other opponents with really strong big players and honestly just Jenny Harikoski at 5'5", five five, just awfully tough to uh, to ignore, but everything else is phenomenal. But yeah, I think I'd rather have shutdown or replace shutdown with truculence and we'd be talking. All right, on to the S tier. That is right. We've got three S tier master sets out of the four that were released. We've got Nikita Kucherov as well uh, at 5'11 with Protector and Gladiator. So this combo is very prevalent in this as well. You can get her, his body checking up to 84. It's the gold elite edges. This ability is just such a fun useful ability in NHL 23. Giving gold gold uh, elite edges is just such an advantage. The cuts left and right, not to mention on defense, I think a lot of people forget about elite edges is always activated. Um, just a really, really good ability 
Uh, that being said, 91 speed, 92 acceleration. His shot is elite. Hand stats are all above 94. Um, I've gone up against him and have had multiple reports of anyone that has Kucherov. And the only way in which I would not make Kucherov is if you have Connor McDavid, even his base card, which you can get for 100k. So, you know, easy options there. Tavo Teravainen as well is basically the same card. Um, so it, the only, he is an S tier player, but McDavid and Teravainen are a very easy combo to get for cheap. 100k for McDavid's base card, but even still, and then you would really don't need Nikita Kucherov. That's the only knock is that those two are very, very similar, but this is still an extremely good card. Mike Green is up next in the S tier, a uh, really, really good right-handed defenseman. So I've used this card on my on my free-to-play team. If you've been watching my No Money Spent series, you know that I really didn't have any strong high-end right-handed defenseman. It was the one position I was completely lacking. I went with Bowen Byram, which I still would recommend, um, and just did, didn't have Latang. wasn't able to make it into the team builders yet. So there's just kind of that big void on the right hand with the right-handed defenseman. Um, this is an S-tier card. After playing a few games of Hut Champs with Mike Green defensively, he's nuts and offensively. Again, elite edges, even on defensemen this year, is super impactful because at the point it, with how good tip shots are you can really create some time and space if you have elite edges on even the silver version and in when my games with Mike Green I was able to really take advantage of that uh, and with seeing eye and heat seeker I still don't think they're worth it but again if you go for a lot of tips you might see an increase uh, I had again scored some goals with uh, with heat seeker and seeing eye with Mike Green defensively as well he's one of the first cards I've noticed in a while that actually intercept passes when you're not perfectly set up for them so uh, again there's no no uh no issues here with mike green unless you have team builders and you went with Latang, maybe then you don't need to get a right-handed defenseman. But if you are lacking in that position, this is a very, very good one to make. All right, then we've got the 89, Timu Solani, S tier as well for me. I made him on the God Squad. And again, the only way in which you don't see him being extremely impactful in your team is if you have, let's say, McKinnon. Uh, you put Zabinijad on the wing. Maybe Mario Lemieux. Uh, Barzal is also... Barzal is just a broken card. Other than that, though, he is unbelievable. Gold close quarter which is awesome wheels on a 94 speed player is great make it snappy i don't really find all that useful as well if you can get heart and soul activated on top of gladiator then the endurance really isn't an issue either however protector is probably an easier one to actually activate um his agility 87 not a factor uh, I used him on the God Squad, and I for an entire cycle zone for an entire zone cycle, I made it a point to use the Timo Solani card and took full advantage of his ability to hold onto the puck. I don't know what it is because his balance is only 86. Maybe it's the strength being 90, but he's not getting bumped off the puck for me at least, and uh, his shot is absolute money. So I think he is an S tier card. He is going to be a. You can even put him at center if you are very good on the draw and you have heart and soul activated. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend amend it but nonetheless an extremely impactful card here that he was along so guys that is going to do it for my rankings again even if i have a card in a lower tier it doesn't mean they're bad all these master set players are phenomenal uh but again this is more of just a guide the reason i went from ranking them in from one to eight as opposed to now doing the tier list is because i think lineups are dependent on what you've got already and it's not so um just absolutely black and white so i hope this helps let me know in the comment section who you've been using have a good one i'll see you next time